If you have multiple gaming devices, Steam Cloud Save is great, but it is so limited. Today, I will show how to keep your game save file always updated on multiple devices, so you can switch to any device without worrying about game save. This method basically works like Steam Cloud Save, but it will work with all PC games and all emulation games on Steam Deck, Windows PC, Mac, and Linux system. Here is an example. I have PS3 Demon Soul running on both Steam Deck and handheld PC, and they have exactly the same save file on both devices right now. On the Steam Deck, if I walk to the first file, then save the game on the Steam Deck, when I reopen the game on the handheld PC, the game save states will be automatically updated on the handheld PC. As we can see, I am next to the fire now. If I keep walking and save the game on the handheld PC, then reopen the game on the Steam Deck. Now the Steam Deck save will be updated to match the handheld PC version. So the save files are always synced on both devices. Before we get into the tutorial section, I would like to explain how this works. Just to be clear, all your data are always stored on your local device. This file sharing process only sends your local files from one device to another through your home Wi-Fi or internet. We have two scenarios to set up this. Scenario A works great for two devices, and this is pretty easy to set up. If you have more than two devices, I would suggest go with scenario B. It requires a center device to be running for 24 hours and 7 days. I will explain how this process works in each scenario setup section. Let's start with scenario A first. I am assuming you have a Steam Deck and another device. I will use a laptop as an example here. But this device can be a Windows PC or a Windows handheld PC a MacBook or Linux system. Let's say the Steam Deck is turned on and the laptop is off. If you are gaming on the Steam Deck, after you save the game, it will create a save file on the deck. Let's call it file A. Then you move to the laptop and power it on. The file A you just created on the deck will be automatically sent to the laptop to overwrite the existing saves on the laptop. But just remember we need to leave the Steam Deck on for about 30 seconds after we turn on the laptop. This 30 seconds is the time to allow file A to be transferred from Steam Deck to the laptop. If we have both devices running at the same time, the file transfer between two devices is instant. First, let's set up the software on the Steam Deck. Go to the Discover Store from Desktop Mode and search for ThinkThing. Then install ThinkThing GTK from the right side of the screen. After the installation is done, double click on it. Then click the launch button from top right corner. Here is the ThinkThing setup page. Just click next here. Click next again. On this web UI page, if you want to use the file transfer remotely, then you can set up a username and password here. But if you only use file transfer within home Wi-Fi, then I would not suggest to set up any password. I will skip the password setup here, and I will show how to access the web UI later on. Click next, then we can close this window. The think thing now is booting up. Let's turn off usage reporting first. Next thing we need to set up here is go to the top left corner and click the triangle icon. Then select UI settings. Under interface, make sure you tick the first box, start syncing when log into my desktop. Also tick the second box, minimize to tree on start. Then we can click save button. Next, I will show how to access Web UI. The Web UI has identical feature as ThinkSync GTK, except we can set auto start from ThinkSync GTK. You can either set up your folders from ThinkSync GTK or Web UI. They are the same thing. So to access the Web UI, go to the triangle icon on the top right corner again and click Open Web Interface. As I said, the web UI has the same feature as ThinkSync GTK. It's your decision which one to use. 
So when you first time open the web UI, it will ask to set up a username and password. If you only use the SyncSync with home Wi-Fi, you don't need to set up a password. But if you are going to use it remotely, then I suggest you to set up a username and password. Once you have set up a username and password, next time when you try to access the web UI, it will ask for your username and password. I will click OK here and ignore the password setup. At this point, the SyncSync will work in the desktop mode, but if we switch to the gaming mode, it will stop working. Or if we boot up the Steam Deck, the SyncSync will not run automatically from the gaming mode. The next step will allow the SyncSync keep running at background in the gaming mode. Also, it will auto start once we turn on the Steam Deck. But again, it is your call if you want to have this auto run feature in the gaming mode. I feel this is a mandatory feature because my game saves can be transferred to other device instantly without switching to desktop mode. Ok, now let's enable SyncSync automatically start in the gaming mode. First, go to the top right corner and click the 3 bar icon and select Shutdown Daemon. Then click Quit. We need to use this SyncSync service file on my desktop. I have the download link under this video description, so please get this SyncSync service file from my video description. Then we need to copy this file into this location as I show on the screen. If you can't see the configure folder, make sure you turn on show hidden files. So just double check and make sure you copied the SyncSync service file into this location. Next, we need to open the console. Then type in the commands and show on the screen. So type in the first command and hit the enter key on the keyboard. You should get this message. Then type in the second command and hit the enter key again. Wait for 10 seconds, the SyncSync window will pop up. This means you have successfully set up the SyncSync Auto Start feature in the gaming mode. If you want to disable the Auto Start feature in the gaming mode, those two commands can be applied. This is all we need to do on the Steam Deck side. The installation on the other device are pretty simple to do. I will quickly show the SyncSync installation on the Windows PC. So go to the SyncSync website and download the Sync Chaser. Most time you should download the 64-bit version, unless your PC are really old, then you need to use the 32-bit version. So download the Sync Chaser Setup EXE from here. Then click the EXE file to process the installation. Once the Sync Chaser installation is done, select Launch the Sync Chaser. Then select Private Network here. Most of the stuff are same as on the Steam Deck. I will rename this device to GPD-14. We can access web UI SyncSync on the Windows too. If you got this warning window, don't worry, just click Advance and continue to process. Everything we do here is only on your local Wi-Fi network. I have been using the SyncSync for about a month. I feel the web UI is more stable and easy to use compared to the software itself. So I will perform all the tasks from web UI. One important thing we need to know is device ID. The device ID is required when we try to connect with other device. So go to Actions and select Show ID. We need to input these freaking long numbers to connect with other device. Now let's connect two device together. I am using the web UI SyncSync on both device. You can use Windows PC to add Steam Deck. It works both way. I will use Steam Deck to add my Windows handheld PC here. Click Add Remote Device. If your device shows up as a nearby device, you can just click on that freaking long ID to add it. But if it doesn't show up as nearby device, 
then you have to check the device ID from Windows PC and then type the device ID into this box here. Since my Windows handheld show up as a nearby device so I can just add it. I found the nearby device most time only works with web UI. So that's why I prefer to use the web UI. After you click save wait for about 30 to 45 seconds. The Windows device will receive this new device connect request message. Just click add device here. Just click save both device should be connected at this point. It's really hard to see with the white background, but if we look at the Steam Deck, it shows GPD-14 connected under the remote device. The next thing we can do is set up the default folder, and we can use this folder to transfer files between two devices. Again, you can set this up from the Windows device too. I will set this up from Steam Deck side, so click edit here. And under sharing, check the GPD-14, and then click save button. Now on GPD-14, it will pop up a new message, and we can just click share to accept this request. If we go to the default folder and click edit, we can see the folder path. I will drop this motion assistant file into this folder. We are expecting to see this file is transferred to the Steam Deck right away. Now let's check on Steam Deck's default folder path. And yes, the motion assistant file is show up here. This is how we can simply transfer files between two devices. Now let's set up game saves folder. I will use PS3 emulator, RPCS3 as showcase here. You can set up this either from Steam Deck end or PC end. It doesn't matter. I will do this from my Steam Deck side. So click add folder button first. Then we need to copy and paste the PS3 emulator save file location into the folder path. This basically tells the same thing. I want to sync my PS3 emulator the save files with other device. So we can delete everything in the folder path right now. And then find the PS3 emulator the save file location on the Steam Deck. Here is the PS3 save file location. So I will copy this folder address from here and paste it into the folder path in the sync thing. I have made a list that covers the most of emulator's save file paths for both Steam OS and Windows PC. So make sure you check the last few minutes of this video. After you copy the game save file location into the folder path, then we can click sharing tab and make sure you tick the device that you would like to share. So I will check my GPD-14 here. We can click save now. Then, if we check our Windows device, we will receive this new folder request message. And just click Add here. On this page, we need to set up the folder path for Windows version PS3 emulator RPCS3 save file location. So this basically means we want the Steam Deck PS3 save file to sync with Windows version PS3 save files. Let's delete the current folder path first, then find the Windows version PS3 save file location and paste the file location to this folder path here. Sometimes it is painful to locate game save files location, but don't worry I have made a list that shows the save file path for most of emulators and PC games on both Steam OS and Windows. Make sure you check out this list at the end of this video. So here I will copy the PS3 game save file address and paste it into the folder path on SyncSync. Then click save. Now the folder will sync right away. As we can see on both devices, the RPC S3 folder shows as up to date. This means both devices now have same files under PS save folder. 
We also can set up a custom name for the folder. I will edit this folder as rpcs 3 saves I will rename the folder name on gpd14 as rpcs 3 save as well. Just try to keep the folder name consistent and easy to recall, especially when you have a lot shared folder here later on. This process will apply for setting up all PC games and emulation game. All we need is the game save pass. So here is my game pass list. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below.